We're here on a back road of western Montana, in the Mission Mountains, Mission Mountain Wilderness. In my background here, 10,000 foot peaks. In the valley bottom here, prairie potholes. I'm going to meet up here with Denver Holt of the Owl Research Institute shortly. It's, it's late in the evening, 7.30 p.m. He assures me there are short-eared owls doing courtship displays in this area. So Denver, what a beautiful place to establish an <laughs> Owl Research Institute. Yeah. Tell me something ab about this place. What well, strikes you? I mean, the mountains. I mean, just, no, just look. Kidding. How can, you can't go wrong. It's a great office. It's <laughs> massive, yet it's open. And um, each day, it's very, very different, both you know, in the scenery and in the things that you see running around out here, wildlife-wise. And you can see here now, when the glacier came down, it moved down through the valley south here and kind of stopped, and you'll see the edge of the moraine, and then it drops off into the Outwash Plain. And all these mountaintops you see here, these Matterhorns, were carved out by glaciers both from the valley here and glaciers which came out of the mountains. And then as it receded, it left all these prairie potholes or these kettle holes of water, mm -hmm. uh, very similar to the Great Plains. Mm -hmm and it just moved back. This whole thing runs about 900 miles, the terminus being right about here, and the valley running, or they call it the Rocky Mountain Trench, running about 900 miles to uh, Northwest Territories, I think. And if you look around with all this grass, if you know anything about small mammals, you know that it provides a lot of food for voles. Mm -hmm. and voles are what makes this whole system up here for the owls that hopefully we're going to see this evening, and for the, the hawks that come down and spend the winters here, and the few species that breed here. So what can we expect to see tonight? Short eared owls, I hope. Short eared owls. <coughs> Actually, I hope courtship activity is what we're looking for. And what we'll see, you know, if we pan this way here, for instance, in the next half hour, 45 minutes, I'm hoping we're going to see a short eared owl come out, take off from the ground, go into its courtship flight, which is called sky dancing, and perform for us both its hoots and its toots. And then it's, it's diving and its, its wings flap. Yeah. <laughs> so a male will go up like this and he'll go up, 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 you know, several hundred feet, and I hope we get to see it. And he'll go. <laughs> he'll dive. Yeah. And when he dives, he brings the wings under the trunk of the body. Goes, comes back up. <laughs> comes down, dives. Comes back up, and it's some cue, and I don't know what it is. He'll dive, and he'll start rocking back and forth like this, making these twists and turns, and coming down. And it's all going on for a female somewhere in the grass or somewhere perched, doing this little call, going. And so when they terminate it, what happens is they get in the grass, and that's where copulation takes place, and the nest is generally in that area. That's what I hope you can wow. see. Well, that's great. I don't even need to see the owls. That, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Denver. Right. There's one flying Got him. just across uh, the field. Oh, look, look at his facial disc. See how it, it's really standing up? He appears to me to be foraging. Let's see what happens. All right, Dick, here we go now. Look at the flight here. It's not a foraging flight. There's something else going on. It's, it's a mixture, I would say, of courtship plus aggression. So how do you know it's not a foraging flight? The wings are being lifted very high? It's very, high. very exaggerated. And the courtship mm -hmm. flight tends to be very, very exaggerated with the wings raised very high oh, above the horizontal. Oh, did you see? Yeah. I the, saw doing clapping the, wing the wings clapping. down together. But when they tend to do it this low and more on a horizontal plane like this, mm -hmm. my impression of that over the years has been that tends to be more aggression. Uh, they come rather in than display to a female. Rather than display because when they're displaying they, tend, they get very very high several hundred feet off the ground. Uh, but when they seem to be aggressive towards another owl or even a human intruder like myself they come in on the horizontal plane and they wing clap at you. Hmm. And so that's that seems to be what's happening there. We did see another owl mm -hmm. which perhaps yep. could indicate that. All right Dick. Now it looks like this owl is going to go up into, I hope, a sky dancing or courtship flight. And you can see the big, big, I would call the power flaps, and some people call it a sachet. Okay. It's going up. Now the wing beats are getting quicker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, going to, it's going to rise. And what we want to do is, in any time now, we want to start being quiet and listening for its hoot. And it'll give a series of <laughs> And then it will do a wing clap. Hoot, wing clap, hoot, wing clap. But once it gets to its desired height, so we really need to just watch and wait. Just cruising still. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there, there it is, it there it is, right there, right. Oh. Okay, now you see that? You see the, the wings are brought under the trunk of the body, mm -hmm. and then they're slapped together. 
And again, the process at which they're slapped together is really not known yet. There it goes. Nice. I couldn't hear yeah, it. Yeah, it's a little, it's kind yeah. of far in the distance. But at the same time, we want to be looking all around us. There may be others just around us. And so, But we're at the beginning of the evening now, so I think we have a good opportunity to see three or four birds get up. They'll build on them year-round, though. But anyway, we'll just keep our eyes open. Hopefully, we'll see a, a bird flush. After that Carrying wonderful display of short-eared owls, we'll this that. morning we're going into a permanent oh, banding yeah. station that Denver has to try to capture long-eared owls. Yeah. You ever see uh, bears in here? I know grizzly bears oh. are abundant in the Mission Mountains. They well, come down to the valleys in the spring, right? Yeah, uh, last week there was two bears in here, two grizzlies. And uh, the state came in, and I think they caught one that couldn't, didn't catch the other. But every spring and fall, we have grizzlies in here, so you have to be careful. That's what you always want to, you know, send a student or somebody in front of you, just in case, <laughs> if you're the principal <laughs> investigator. <laughs> you got to wear shoes so you can run faster than the next, <laughs> next person. Right. So the idea, then, is to get them flying down through the tunnels. They won't detect the nets because we have a background. And then when they hit the net, they'll roll into one of the bags, like the hat here. Uh -huh. And then we have to figure out which bag they're in. So there'll be four bags here. And that's the important part, is figuring out which bag. It just makes taking them out a little easier. There she goes, there she goes. She's in, she's in, she's in. Okay. You got her. Unbelievable. Long-eared owl. That was amazing. That worked out well. You can see it's a male. and. I what can. you can see, yeah, and what no, I want I to tell you, okay, <laughs> see how white it is? Yeah. And there's a real lack of any kind of shaft streaks or blotches uh -huh. on the coverts under uh -huh. here. Uh -huh. And what we've done is we've taken a month of soil color chart, and we can match the colors of the males and the females, the known males and known females. And there's highly significant differences, the facial disc, the wing lining, and then the tarsus here. Mm -hmm. Highly different. The females are very, very rust colored. So this was the male. He came in to defend the nest that you and I just climbed. Males are smaller than females in most all the owls nice. of the world. Ear tufts. Oh, uh, isn't that nice? The tufts have nothing to do with hearing, as you, you know. And they're to mimic little twigs and branches and even flicks of white. Mm -hmm. uh, Make them very you see the different colors. And to, along with the concealment posture. They'll take on a posture. And, uh, and of course, their camouflage coloration here. Help to make them inconspicuous. And now you, you can really see the definition of the facial disc here. Yeah. And when they're hunting, they seem to raise the outline of the facial disc here. And it just, it's almost right. like on high alert. Right. So it's like a parabolic reflector just taking in sound. And if you, you can get a better look at the adult ear here. Oh, there, you yeah. Can I see, see that? the ear opening. Yeah, there's the ear yeah. opening there. So which that's a good illustration of how the ear tufts don't have anything to do with the ear hearing per se. Right. Yeah. You saw how large it was, or how long, and it's almost the entire facial disc. Yeah. And the left one is positioned a little bit higher mm -hmm. than the right one. Mm -hmm. And even a better illustration of the extended barbs oh. on the feathers for silent flight. Look at the beautiful owl feather adaptations. This front leading edge here looks like a comb. Look at that. That, that supposedly uh, helps reduce the blurbing sounds of wind blowing over the front edge, leading edge of the wing? Right. Technically, they're just uh, modified barbs, and they you know, reach out a little further there. And as the boundary layer of air passes over the wing, what it does is it just hits that boundary layer of air, and it softens it. Mm -hmm. And so reducing aerodynamic noise created by flight. Also, owl feathers are so distinctive because they're so soft, incredibly soft. They slide noiselessly against one another. Yeah, as individual feathers slide over each other, it further reduces friction noise. So a lot of people think, oh, owls fly silently so that the prey don't hear them coming in. It's reducing the amount of noise they're making so that they can hear right. and use acoustical cues while they're foraging. So tell me something about just general owl features, what strikes you most when you look at a body like that. Um, how small they are. That the really body strikes is, that's, me. Yeah. I mean, you look at this, and it appears to be a large, long-winged bird. And it does have relatively long wings. However, its body mass, this is a male, as I told you, and males only weigh 
about 270, 75 grams when they're breeding. In females, as you know, in owls, or most all owls in the world are larger than males, and females weigh about 340 grams. So they're really tiny. They're just made up of feathers, <laughs> and um, in feathers is what it comes down to. <laughs> and they have this, you know, again, really long wings, relatively broad, and a light weight. So you have that body mass divided by the wing area, and, and you get this very low wing loading. Floating magic there. And that, and that's, that gives them that floating yep. appearance. Beautiful, long-eared owl. I'm going to let it go now, and uh, I think the thing that's really neat, we've talked about these adaptations, particularly the wing loading, mm -hmm. and how buoyant a flight it is, and how that really low wing loading allows these guys to fly, fly very slow, very quietly, and have super agility. So when we let it go, we won't say a word, and we'll just watch it fly. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, beautiful.